We would like to bring you people in Singapore. You are an economic boss, the English talks your program that outlook the economic policy for your business. And we're still talking about Eurozone financial crisis and its impact toward Indonesian economy with Vicky Amanani from Monex Investing Law Futures. Well, Mr. Vicky, back to Indonesia. Yeah. Indonesia bankers now have expressed their concern always, you know, over yes. the potential impact of the Eurozone crisis on the nation economy and on its bank. How do you see this? Okay. Well, if we see, for example, Indonesian corporates and the banking sector, they're expecting lending to increase by 26% mm -hmm. this year, which is very, very healthy. Uh, the, the Bank of Indonesia has also cut interest rates in February to 5.75% mm -hmm. to support the local economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best part about Indonesia is actually among the ASEAN countries, Indonesia is the most well insulated uh, from the European crisis because 60% of the GDP is from domestic consumption. So that's very good. And also in terms of the exports, uh, Indonesia exports to Europe is only 10%, about 9 in fact to be precise. It is 20% in US and Europe together, but recently Europe, uh, US economic indicators have been doing very well. Retail sales came out good, non-farm payrolls were positive, uh, jobless claims are at four-year lows, so that's all good. So, you know, provided that the three main economies, US, Europe and China, mm -hmm. they all don't fall apart at the same time, it, uh, Indonesia is doing very well. And also in terms of earnings growth, they expect a 28% earnings growth for Indonesian corporates, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. In terms of GDP growth, global GDP growth is expected only at about 28 to 3.2%, whereas Indonesia posted growth of 6.5% mm -hmm. in 2011, and the forecast for 2012 is 6.3 to 6.5%. And they've also made a bankers, in fact. They've also made a worst case scenario if oil prices are this high, with the Harga BBM you know, increasing and everything. Uh, worst, worst GDP growth will be 5.8 percent, which is magnificent for Indonesia. How insulated can we be then? Are we really can really really depending on the domestic market all the time? Well, domestic market 60 percent earnings. Corporate are expected to post earnings growth of about 20 to 25 percent. GDP growth is six and a half percent. Lending, which is very important, because if corporates cannot borrow money, then you know everything collapses, right? There's liquidity crunch in the market. Mm -hmm. But uh, banks expect lending to increase by 26 percent. Banks have a healthy profit margin of between 25 to 30%. So unemployment is at 6%, which is excellent compared to year 2000 at 11.9%. So it's half. Uh, GDP per capita is at $3,100 compared to $1,000 in year 2000. Uh, exports last year hit all time high of 205 billion. And Indonesian exports have doubled in five years. No other country has done that. Whether you name it, China took seven years, Malaysia took eight years, Saudi Arabia took 26 years to double the export. So if you see the performance of Indonesia, it is magnificent. But a lot of people worry that if their growth is so fast, yeah. that they, you know, the economy can get overheated. But if you ask me, I don't see the Indonesia economy overheated because of strong domestic consumption. Uh, Indonesia being invested, uh, upgraded to triple B minus investment grade because a lot of investment funds have a limitation. They can only invest into countries which are a minimum of investment grade, which Indonesia already is. So that also brings in a lot of money and stabilizes the rupiah. If you see the rupiah, despite the price of petrol going up and everything, rupiah, rupiah is stabilized at 9200, despite you expecting demonstrations today. In fact, the roads are very empty to the office today. Can you say that our banking sector is a bit overconfident toward the lending sector or the lending growth? They expect too much from the lending growth. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because Indonesia is an emerging market, there is a lot of growth still uh, in the market. A lot of uh, money is also being borrowed for the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. For Indonesia to become a developed nation, like like they said, they want to s reduce the subsidized fuel, increase the fuel price, and devote the funds mm -hmm. for infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. That is one key progress for Indonesia to uh, become a developed nation and you know and grow further in the future. What other key progress could be the defining factor? Uh, okay, if you want to see in terms of the risks, maybe we can see the risks are still the presidential election in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, capital outflow from Indonesia, because there is a lot of foreign direct investment that comes to Indonesia. Unless there is a major panic, in, in Europe collapses, China collapses, America goes you know, haywire, then there could be a you know, huge uh, foreign direct investment outflow from Indonesia. And maybe the third thing would be inflation, you know, with, uh, with global fuel prices at $107 mm -hmm. and Indonesian uh, uh, premium prices have been increased from 4,500 to 6,000 as of 1st April, about 33%. Mm -hmm. There is a fear that the prices of food, especially harga sambako, basically, mm -hmm. is going to be is going to increase. In fact, I was just reading the newspaper over the last two weeks. The price of chili, chili is the biggest concern. The price of chili has only increased by 50%. Mm -hmm. So there could be some uh, short-term concerns with the price of food inflation, mm -hmm. but I don't think that's going to bring any major inflation hike. For the year of 2012, my forecast for inflation is 
5.5% for 2012, which is under control with interest rates at 5.75%. But I do see that maybe the Bank of Indonesia, to support local demand further, if there is slowdown from China and Europe, they may further cut interest rates to 5.5% in the second quarter of 2012. Based on the article you shared with me earlier during the break, also talking about uh, preventing the capital outflow from our country, there is a new foreign currency regulation. How far this regulation might help in terms I, of blocking the... Okay. Uh, I think it's a tremendous regulation, uh, it's a magnificent regulation because they have, uh, they basically have put a constraint for people who want to send money above 100,000 US dollars. They have to have a genuine reason if it's for health purpose or for education that is fine but nobody can remit out over hundred thousand dollars for savings purposes outside indonesia mm. so that at least keeps the us dollars you know mm. within within indonesia it doesn't you know at least limits the capital yeah. outflow and there was also an interesting bit mentioned that the, uh, maybe some clients have a very good relationship with banks mm. and they can remit out over hundred thousand but that would also be limited to once a year so that is a good regulation put into place to limit capital outflows and we can also see, look at the local stock market there, Jakarta Com uh, Composite Index is also holding well above 4,000. There's no panic. In fact, two, three weeks ago, there was panic and the Jakarta Composite Index dropped to like about 3, 7, uh, 3 800 level. But if we can see the Indonesian stock index is holding about 4,000. They have to, they have to live with it or have to adjust the price of fuel having to hike up basically. But how actually how fragile or let's say good to put how sensitive Indonesia as a country can be a country just for temporary, you know, capitalizing like the capital outflow will be easily happen in our country. Um, what I see is that most foreign companies who have invested in Indonesia have invested for long-term investment. Mm -hmm. So it's not something over two, three years span, but maybe up to ten years or even over ten years, especially in the infrastructure section. Uh, one of the biggest exports of Indonesia is oil and gas, next comes uh, oil and gas, and then the next is coal, basically. Then comes the other smaller exports, such as tire, textile, electronical appliances, and everything. But there is a lot of demand for that from countries such as China, India, Japan, who are bigger partners than Europe. Mm. So yeah, I think uh, there is enough growth, there is strong domestic uh, consumption, there is good support from the Bank of Indonesia to lower interest rates, inflation will still be under control. So I think they have the policies and everything in place to, to, to ride the, the volatility from the European crisis. Yeah. The biggest issue talked by everybody today, especially about the issue of the price of subsidized fuel. You know, yeah. Would the government plan to raise the price of subsidized fuel in this coming April will stop inflation? Uh, exactly. That's why I said like maybe the price of chili has hiked up by 50%, you know, but I think most of it is a lot of fear from people. People are already worrying that costs will rise and then they cannot pass these costs to the, to the uh, consumers. But actually, if you see the young population, uh, there is rising income, there's urbanization. So people, the middle class is getting richer. It's not just the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, which was the case maybe in the year 2000 and before that. So that will support. And I think in, uh, accordingly with rising incomes, inflation will also be in control. I do not see inflation overall in 2012 increasing above 6%. All right, Mr. Vicky, we are going to continue to this one. Thank you. One of the discussion about Eurozone financial crisis and its impact toward the Indonesian economy will be brought to you soon. Stay with us on Economic Basin.